Hello, I'm all, and welcome to Speaking of Everything. Now, I have a very, very interesting program in that the person that you're going to meet in a while has never been on this show before. And uh, it's the first time in 40 plus years that I'm doing an interview like this. And my guest is Mr. Linroy Williams. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Bless morning, bless morning, and thanks for having me here. Well, it's good to have you on the program. And um, it's quite interesting how this all came together. Yep, <laughs> it is. Uh, my good friend, Koto Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, he was on Facebook showing a dog that was trapped in the gate, and you came over to rescue the dog. Yeah. Right. And I saw you speaking about, I'm trying to use my word carefully here, <laughs> speaking about dogs and what people should do when they have a dog, yeah, and you were also explaining the importance of taking care of a dog based on the person's personality and all. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So I said to myself, "Hey, I'm a dog lover, and this guy is saying things I've never heard locally before." Uh -huh. So I called Koto. I said, "Koto, I need to speak to that guy," and that's, <laughs> and that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, so it's good small one. It. Yeah, it's good, great. Thank so, you, Mr. Williams. Um. You, you involved with dogs for how long now? My whole life. <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> I started training. My first, first dog I ever trained, I was 12 years old. Wow. Without even knowing what I was doing. So you really had this love, passion for dogs. That's in me. Yeah, it's it's a gift. It's great, great. You know, um, you also have a company set up now, right? So you're on both yeah. sides of the island? Yeah. 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 Security and dog training school. So both of them. Because I've been in security also my yeah. whole life. I start working security um, at the age of 17 years old with my own personal dog. It's good? That's yeah. Good. What's your favorite dog? Malinois. <laughs> <laughs> Belgium Shepherd. Yeah, Can't yeah. go wrong. It is amazing because I, I used to have um, German Shepherds. Uh -huh. And then the late Mr. Charlie Flon uh, yeah. gave me a Malinois as okay. a gift. And that was a few years before he passed away. All right. And I was like, wow, this dog is amazing. Yep. Right? The dog used to stay by the gate, wait until I come home, never step outside, uh -huh. you know. And the dog lived like for 10 years and died because of um, some cancer. Okay. And I cried, man. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I cried. That, that hurts. Yeah, Trust you me, that hurts. And since that time, I've had four, I have now four more melanoids. Wow. They're just beautiful dogs. Yep. Amazing dogs. Not for everyone, and you describe not, that. Not for everyone, yeah. and people don't understand it. Some people just go with the dogs, like I was explaining, Koto, where style is concerned to them. Mm. So they see a movie, the dog is being, you know, the Superman of the movie, yeah. and like, yeah, I got to get his dog. So if it's a Chihuahua, like when Beverly Hills Chihuahua came out, yeah. St. Martin got infested, and the world got infested with Chihuahuas. Because... Uh -huh that's the star i have to have a chihuahua and people just look at things like that but they need to look at it on another perspective yeah, another it, angle yeah but yeah. it's a very hyper dog oh yeah a lot of energy yep and i'm seeing more of them on the island now a lot more yeah and the issue for that is again like mm -hmm. i say style fashion and then other people take it as an opportunity to make a fast buck without knowing what they're doing. We need to change that. Yeah. You need to be a professional where breeding is concerned. Right. You know? You need to know about dogs, not just take dogs, or go and pay for a dog and pay for the next one to breed them and just sell to make a fast buck. Because that's, that's a problem. It is a serious problem here on the island. I know, I know a guy um, told me he had a uh, melon wall, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use it term interchangeably now, um, Belgian Shepherd. Yeah. And so more people know him by that name on the island. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me he had to return the dog because he couldn't deal with it. And I said to him, man, you should have let me know. Yeah. I would have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't go with that personality. No. He couldn't deal with it. No, 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 no. A lot of people want it, but that dog is like, it's like having 10 kids or more. That one Malinois is having 10 kids or more. That dog, like I was telling Koto, uh -huh. this dog, even when it's tired, it's not tired. 
That's how much energy those dogs have. And I heard they have a very high tolerance for pain too. Yeah. The more you do that dog anything, and that's when you have a serious working bloodline. Okay? Or you have show line and you have working bloodline. When you have a serious working bloodline, the more you give that dog pain, the more that dog gets crazy. Yeah. It's Trust just, me. It's just amazing. Yeah. And and so I, I've seen all your certifications and everything else. You have a, a lot of uh, history and training. Yeah, I do. And it, it ain't stopping there because uh, I ain't done. I'm still going to go for more. Do, do you find local people surprised seeing a local guy as uh, a dog trainer? Yes and no. <laughs> those, for those that grew up with me, mm. it's a no. Yeah. Because they knew from school days, I would finish school and if you know, like, like when you finish early, mm. I used to live next to the school, so I would just walk around, go take up my two big Rottweilers and come back down by the school and chill out. You know, so everyone knew that from school days. They used to even call me, my nickname was Glenn Dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So... Yeah. Yeah, they used to call me Glenn Dog. That was my nickname in school where the dogs is concerned, you know? And um, I grew up with dogs. So for those who grew up with me, know me from then, it's not a surprise to them. But then for other people, it's like, yeah. oh, we never knew that St. Martin had real professional dog trainers and stuff. There's one or two of us right here on the island. It's not many. Some claim to be and not. But you do have one or two certified professionals right. on this island, both French and Dutch. You know, as I said earlier, what attracted me to bring you in the show was how you describe dogs, how you describe people, yeah, and how the two of them go together, and how you should avoid certain dogs depending on your lifestyle. Uh, exactly, you know, yeah. and and that was crucial because on St. Martin today, you know, you know, a lot of people have dogs. Yeah, Some people don't do. really take good care of them. I, mm -hmm. I spend thousands of dollars on food and medication on yep. my dogs. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't want to make that commitment, but they want to have the but dog. But they want to have the dog. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're talking about the lifestyle with a type of dog, mm -hmm. a lot of people need to understand this. If you know you have two jobs, okay? Right. You have two jobs, meaning you basically don't have no time for yourself. Okay? So if you live alone... Having two jobs, don't have a dog. Because what time do you have for that dog? And it could be a chihuahua. Do not the, have it. Uh, exactly. Because that chihuahua still need to go and walk. He do not need an hour walk, but he needs to go and walk. Right. You understand where I'm coming from? He needs that time to go on the beach. To, you know, a dog needs to be trained mentally and also physically to burn that energy. And not just physically mentally and mentally is the most important mm. part you have belgium shepherds and as we spoke earlier those dogs don't get tired they have crazy energy but if you want to see them get tired and tired and sick of you try to train them mentally and you're going to see training them mentally wise mm. in five to six minutes that dog is going to show you like yo i had enough <laughs> Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but then you're going to bring them to run, swim, go hiking, and three hours later, they're telling, telling you, hey, what really happened? Good. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how it is. You know, it's amazing you say that because I have one that is uh, going on 16 years old. And every morning... 16 years. 16 years. Imagine that. And every morning, I exercise, and the dog always exercises with me. With now, you? Yeah, with me. But now she's older yeah. and can't keep up. Yep. And she's like struggling, you know. But she wants still wants to, to go. Exactly. They don't give yeah. up. They don't. It's just amazing dog. Yep, they are. And um, there's other dog, a Rottweiler. How do you feel about that dog? I always had a Rottweilers. Yeah. Always. This is basically one of my first dogs when I say, well, as a little boy, the first dog yeah. I trained was a mixed pit bull with Island Dog. But after that dog, my first real like breed mm. was Rottweilers. I love Rottweilers. Yeah. But Rottweilers is very special dogs. Um, they're not as hyper right. and not as, um, how to say, energetic as a Belgium shopper, of course. But they are there. They stand up. Yeah. <laughs> they are ready for anything. And you have to be ready to deal with a Rottweiler. It's not for anybody 
either. You have to be ready for that dog. But all breeds, basically, dogs is great. Dogs, no matter the breed, they are great. You just have to learn about the dogs, learn about the breed. And even though you learn about a certain breed, if you're looking into that breed, you need to also remember, and that's where people go wrong. They would go on YouTube and yeah. they would check, okay, about Malinois, for example. Right. Boom, 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 boom. And they're seeing everything they're saying about the Malinois. Good. Then they go and get a Malinois and see that that Malinois is acting a little <laughs> different from all what they see on YouTube. But hello, each dog is an individual just like each human. Mm. We're all humans. I'm not like you, you're not like me. Right. So why, because it's a Malinois, he has to be exactly like what people describe on YouTube? No. He has his own spirit, his own way. Mm. So it's not because he's a Malinois that he's going to be 100% of what people are saying about him. You need to learn your dog, study your dog individually. Yeah, and that, that's important. It's very important. Yeah. And people miss out on that. In case you just joined us, just to speak about everything, I'm here speaking with uh, Mr. Glenn Roy Williams. He's a local dog trainer in the island. Also have uh, spaces on both sides of the island. Yep. And the name of the company? Canine Jaws of Justice. Canine, Canine Jaws, Jaws, Jaws of Justice. Of justice. <laughs> so when people come to you, what they usually ask you for? All type of things. You're talking about dog training, yeah. right? All type of things. You know, here we have this issue as well where a lot of poisoning goes on. Right. People just hate. A lot of people on the island, it's sad to say, a lot of people hate animals. Okay? And they would basically just throw poison wherever. Some people go and they throw poison on the beaches. Really? I'm serious. Wow. I some people, go, yep. I go on the beaches a lot. I always on the beach with my dogs. And some people actually go on the beaches and show poison on the beaches to poison dogs. Oh, that's really surprising. At time Fry's Bay had a big, big yeah. issue where they had poison. A whole heap of dogs was just dying off mm. in Fry's Bay because they threw poison all over the place. You know, you have that hate for animals here in St. Martin. But <clears throat> people, so this is a thing that certain people has asked for, which is very important here. Poison training. So your dog don't eat mm. nothing if it's not you giving it to it in its bowl, for instance, right. okay? Um, obedience is a must. I don't care what no one comes to me about. With training, the obedience is the first thing. And bonding with your dog. You need to learn your dog, and you need to bond with your dog. So that's that. People ask for guard dogs. People ask for protection dogs. Describe for me so that people understand the difference between the two. Well, a guard dog is basically a dog that you have that is gonna guard your yard right. with your house and stuff like that, or you put it into a junkyard or, you know, yeah. places like that, where it's just gonna protect that place. A protection dog now is a dog that you could move with wherever you want to. So you go with your dog all over. So if, for instance, you're going to the ATM, your protection dog is with you. You go to the ATM, you pull out your money, mm. your dog is there, somebody come to rush you, you don't even need to give a command because your back is turned. You don't know that person is coming. The dog sees it and the dog reacts and protects you. That's a protection dog. A guard dog is mm, right. in the yard protecting that yard. It's quite interesting. So people want more of the guard dog, right? For well, a lot of them right now with what's happening, mm. a lot, a lot of people is calling and asking about protection dogs because... Oh, okay. Uh, you know yeah. what's going on right now in St. Martin but a while now so a lot of people is asking for protection dog then someone was joking they have a little dog a small little one mm -hmm. like 15 pounds that's a watch dog because that's the alarm. I call them the alarms <laughs> <laughs> I call them the, the alarms noisy. yeah yeah Cause they're always the first to go uh -huh. always the first to go because they're not, they're not afraid huh? Yeah. they just don't have size could you imagine they're, they're not that afraid kind of like the little chihuahua yeah. they, they're not afraid they're not backing down but it's just that they can't really do anything because of the size. <laughs> but they, they're not afraid. So yeah. when you have a little chihuahua and you have maybe two Rottweilers or two Malinois in the back, yeah. you know you're good. Because the chihuahua is going to say, hey, 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 <laughs> these dudes is there. And then the two big boys come in the back. <laughs> in trouble. And, <laughs> and that's how it is. Yeah. What do you feel? You know, sometimes I see people coming by people gate mm -hmm. and trying to play with the dog. How do you feel about that? Play with the dog. Yeah. 
people need to understand they need to respect animals respect dogs i have this i had this issue many many times even when i was working as a security officer canine handler with my dog people would come up to me i used to work by super use one of the places i used to work and um they had this dude i remember a time big military ex-military dude um and he's like yeah um, i want to pet the dog I say sir no the dog is working and this dog don't like nobody else than me so it's a no 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 no. but i know dogs i work in the military with dogs my whole life and he's getting more mad than me because i told him he cannot come to caress yeah. my dog and although i told him that he's still stepping forward to me and i'm reversing from him uh -huh. up to the part i was like hey i told you no so now stop and he's like he still put out his hand and my dog lunch for him but i was done expecting it yeah so I jerk it back and say, no. And he's like, oh, but that dog. And I say, no, you need to respect what's not yours. It's not because you love dogs right. that all dogs would like you. It's not yours. So you need to know if you basically work with dogs your whole life in the military, you should understand Better, yeah. <laughs> to don't do what you just did. Well, what you just tried to do. Yeah. You yeah. know? And people need to understand that. Respect animals. Because going to look to play, and some of them playing is one. But some of them actually, and a lot of young children does that. They battle the dogs through the fence. They mm. take sticks, they take rocks. And then if that dog jump out and go after them, get away, come after them and bite them, the parents is want to want to fight the people them or whatever, whatever. But you need to know what your children was doing. And this is why I was telling Koto, it is very important to start going to the schools and teaching the children from the youngest of age about animals right. and respect from the young you don't wait till they get bigger from the youngest of age you go and you teach them you go with a dog that is right that have respect that is you know that they could caress that they could this you teach them about the dogs you teach them respect you teach them you need to leave them no you don't just go up to a dog and look to touch you ask if you could touch and, and and have the schools ever invited you to come by and do that no never I think it, it's it's very very good idea. It's yeah. very, it's yes, it is. Very important. It is. I did it, but not in Saint Martin. Yeah. With schools, yeah. but not here. Well, I hope the schools will call you, man, because it's important. We it's see dogs important. all over the place, and it's very important how you deal with that. Because I, I've seen people come want to touch my dog. Yeah. And I said, don't do it because if you come too close, the dog's gonna react. Exactly. So, so, yeah. Exactly, and they don't understand that. Another issue we have here. Mm is people going to the beach or wherever hiking yeah and stuff and they go with the dogs off the leash oh that's not good off the leash and then your dog don't listen it's not even trained mm. so when they see someone or another dog they come some of them don't come to fight they come to play but who tells you that that netter dog wants to play exactly who tell you that that person who your dog is going to run up to don't have allergies yeah who told you that they didn't get bit from a dog before and it's traumatized exactly so you need to respect people you understand and for the safety of your dog as well because if your dog is coming to play but my dog don't like other dogs and your dog come up to my dog mm -hmm. and my dog hold your dog you're the one at fault you understand yeah but you just put your dog through pain because he's gonna get yeah. bite you understand so people need to understand is certain things that you just don't do. So then you, you should always have your, your dog on a leash? You should always have your dog on a leash, right? If your dog is not trained okay. properly, you cannot handle your dog. And even, like for instance, I would go somewhere, maybe on a beach or whatever, I first watch. Okay, there's nowhere, no one around, or the person is all the way down there, far, far, far. I let my dog go because I know that dog listens to me. Now, if I see someone start coming towards me, I call my dog and I Don't clip the leash on. Okay. Even though the dog is trained, yeah. you respect others. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important, eh? because sometimes you walk with a dog and it's not a leash, and the dog see a lizard or it goes crazy. Yep. <laughs> <then you> <laughs> hunting, hunting, hunting phase one time. Yeah. But, but there are ways to train your dog to avoid that. Of right? course. Yeah. 
of course, all of that boils back down to obedience. As long as you have a bond with your dog and proper obedience, mm. you're good. Have you ever had a dog that wouldn't listen? Of course. <laughs> we, At that's, all? That's where, you, that's where you're the start. And, and you were able to get that dog to after yeah. that? Yeah, it's a must. Yeah. It's a must. So all dogs can... Uh, obedience, all dogs could take obedience. All. All dogs cannot be search and rescue dogs. Mm. All dogs cannot be protection dogs. All dogs cannot be drug detection dogs. But all dogs could be trained where obedience is concerned. No, I know this. I, I guess I have a lot of dogs. I, I can see the different temperament yeah. and how some of them are more sociable than others. Mm -hmm. Is that an issue sometimes? Issue? If you want to put it that way. Mm. But then look at it on the other side. We humans, can you get along with everyone? That's the first thing I'd ask people when they come and telling me about dogs and this. Yeah, but no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Oh, no. You as a human being, you would just see someone and see how that person is acting and your spirit will not tolerate and accept and like mm. that person's spirit. And same thing with dogs. Right? Same thing with dogs. <laughs> so if your dog mm. is telling you he do not want that next dog to be his friend, why force him? Do not force your dog. The only thing you need to do yeah. is have your dog under control that he don't, he don't look to go and attack the dog for no reason. But if the dog comes to play with him and he says, no, I don't want to play with the dog, Respect the dog feeling. Yeah. And I just tell people, oh, you're chatting, no, 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 and whatever. No. You need to respect the dog. Just like me. You're not going to force me right. to be friend with somebody that I don't feel to be friend with. I'm not going to disrespect that person. I'm not going to hate that person. Right. But I'm not going to stick around that person. So why force my dog to do such? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Some dogs also, uh, like, mirror their owners. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yep. another thing. They have a saying in French, they say, tell she and tell <laughs> met, like dog, like owner. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right about that. You know, it's, you know, the thing is that sometimes you stand with your dog and people see the dog looking so nice and cute because the dog has this nice little face mm -hmm. and they want to come over and say, hi, doggy. You shouldn't do that. No, nope. right. The dog could look nice, but when you come, <laughs> you see the change of the mood, boop, you get bit. And see, uh -huh. again, same thing going back to human being. You would see this person and you would say, boy, that girl or that boy is so quiet. And I just admire that child. <laughs> you don't know the hells that child is giving the parents home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with the dogs. Well, I'll tell you what, in case you've just joined us, speaking about everything, I'm here with Mr. Williams, Glenroy Williams, a dog trainer. And he's my guest and we're here speaking with him. We're going to go to a break, Mr. Will. Let me come back. Yes, sir. We're going to continue speaking right here on Speaking of Everything on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio with Mr. Glenn Roy Williams. Please stay with us. My guest on Speaking of Real Thing is Mr. Glenn Roy Williams. The gentleman is a dog trainer. You have his business here in St. Martin, both French and Dutch side, right? Yes, sir. Right. Um, you know, I give my dogs cake, and they love it. Yeah? <laughs> cake. <laughs> cake and ice cream. <laughs> See your face now. I'm sure I have this little commercial I got to mention about cake. Uh-huh. I love cake. You ever, okay, good. You ever heard of the Cake Boss? I heard about the Cake Boss, but I don't know where the Cake Boss is located. Well, the Cake Boss is uh, Mr. Um, Genius. Uh, he's Richardson by the name. The last name is Richardson. Victor okay. Richardson. Famous Calypsonian here in St. Martin. Uh, but yeah. the man's a master at making cakes. Wow. So I call him the Cake the Boss. The Cake Boss. But his business is actually the Cake Box, right? Yep. And, you know, 
at the cake box you can get all kinds of cakes and everything else that you want right here on St. Martin. Where is yeah. that? Where is that? No, it's in Cold Bay. Okay. Uh, um, just on the Lagoon area. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have some di different telephone numbers uh, like 5812171. That's 5812171 is the telephone number. All right. And a lot of people will call him to have a cake for a special occasion okay. or for Christmas. Nice. So now the Christmas is just around the corner. Yeah. Right. So you can have your, your pies, your puddings, your tarts. You know your cakes look like yeah, I have to, look like I have to check him to make a punch a Cuba cake for me now. Oh man, no, you're talking. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. Genius makes the best punch a Cuba cake you can ever get, man. Man, you sending me down there. Tell you, you got to check him out. You sending me down there. Five eight one two one seven one. You you, you stop by there. You tell Genius the cake boss, Oral Gibbs sent you, and man, he's gonna take good care of you. Great, right, I'll so. do so. So anyway, all the people in St. Martin, if you're looking for a great cake for the holiday season or any time, call the Cake Boss at the Cake Box. And the number is 581-2171. You know, it's amazing. I, my dog loves cake too, by the mm -hmm. way. Is it bad to give your dog cake? All depends on the ingredients you have in the cake. Let's so you have, to, you have to, yeah, exactly. So you have to look up, you have to basically look up and see what's good for your dogs and not. Because you had certain certain type of ice creams, I never really, you know, go yeah. into those. There's too much things to know. Like vanilla's you okay. You know, and whatever. But depending on what type of ice cream yeah. or whatever, you could give the dog some, you can't, you know? Yeah. So you have to look in into what's good for the dog or not. That way you know if you could give it to your dog or yeah. not. Yeah. Well, I try a little vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Oh, yogurt. They love yogurt. Yeah, yogurt, yogurt is good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yogurt is good. And also I didn't realize I was reading that they're both sardines. So of and course, they, they love sardines. sardines. Anything with fish, like fish oil and those stuff is yeah. is great. What what do you great. give your dogs basically? I give them a lot of um, cod liver oil. Really? Yeah. Yeah, cod liver oil. Um, you have the another one there, salmon oil, and all those stuff. Or you put it in the food? Yeah. Or, or basically in the water most of the time. Oh, okay. I put it directly in the water. You, how you feel about dry food versus wet food? Uh, you think dry food is... You, okay, wet food, you're talking about the canned food? Right. No good. No good? For me, no good. Experience, no good. Now, the dry food mm -hmm. is way better than the canned food. But if you have to talk about what's the best, but it's way too expensive to be doing it in St. Martin, is raw feedings. Really? Yeah. Because remember, dry food... There's a lot of chemicals to keep it together, for it not to spoil, for mm, this, right. for that. So you still, even the best of the dry foods have its bad part. But the best is raw feedings. But it's, like I said, especially when you have a lot of dogs, it's way too expensive to do so in San Juan. So that's why most people go just for the, 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 the dry, dry food. food. Exactly. Yeah. And is there, there's some dry food and you give it to the dog, they have all colors in the poop, man. That's, yep. Those are, and... You, they need to know um, the more colorings mm -hmm. that is in the food means it's no good for your dog. So you basically try to get a food that has only one color. You got a food that you see three, four, four, for how much colors inside of it, Boy, you don't yeah. know already that. That's a no-no. Yeah. And, and um, in, in terms of feeding now, you know, there's, a, there's two schools of thought where you feed your dog in the morning or in the evening, some people say no, just once a day, and that's fine. It all depends. Yeah. It again, your lifestyle, one, and the dog, and also the age. Because a puppy, you have to feed the dog like three times a day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Junior, then you go to two times a day. Adult is once. Now, for some people, what they would do, that one portion, they would, they like, ah, oh, nah, I'm not gonna feed my dog only one. So, what you do, you split that one portion. When the dog is already an oh, adult, okay. you split it in two. Uh -huh. So you could give the dog half of that portion in the morning and another half in the evening. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Another thing, in, in terms of our culture as Caribbean people, Simran people, a lot of people don't like the idea of a dog in the house. Yeah. Um, my dogs will come in here in the station, they relax, and some, mm. no way they have to go and don't go. Yeah, you know? exactly. But for a lot of people, they, they don't, they don't like that. Yeah. The reason, again, is like you just said, mm -hmm. culture. Back in the days before I was born, <laughs> the folks used to have a dog for having a dog. So the dog would be there, mm -hmm. they wouldn't ill-treat the dog. 
but the dog would be there just tying a chain. And that's how we grew up knowing dogs, okay? Yeah. Just to have a dog in the yard on a chain to bark when a stranger comes around. But a dog is so much more than that. So much more. And people need to learn about it. Yeah. You know, they can be great companions. Great. Very, very the best. Yeah. Yeah. The best. Better than humans. Oh, yeah. Unconditional love. No matter what, they're always Better than there humans. for you. <laughs> and speaking about chain, uh -huh. a lot of people get offended when you talk about tying a dog. But I don't have no problem. I tie dogs. Who get mad, get mad. That's their business. I tie dogs. I put dogs in kennels. There are reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But they do not stay tied 24-7. They do not stay locked up in a kennel 24-7. Right. As people see on my videos, my dogs is always out with me. I'm always hiking with my dogs. I'm always on the beach with my dogs. I'm always somewhere with my dogs. All right? Now, if you tie a dog 24-7 and don't let that dog go, that's, a problem. that's crucial. That's, no, it's a no-no. Same thing with locking it up in a cage. Right. It's a no-no. Now, tying a dog at times or locking it up in a kennel at times is the best thing for that dog. Because certain dogs, look, for instance, a dog in St. Peter's that we had the issue with. Right. The dog got trapped, yes, in the gate. But the problem was not that. The real problem is that the dog was escaping from the yard and attacking people that was passing on the road. It attacked a young schoolgirl. It attacked an elderly man wow. that is in his 70s. Mm. It attacked another elderly man. It attacked an elderly lady. Really? Yes. Wow. So that was the issue that day. And that dog wasn't in a, uh, an adult or a puppy, right? N no, no, no. She's an adult. adult she, but, yeah. yeah. And that was the issue. So in that case, just before I left, the gentleman, the owner, ended mm -hmm. up reaching, you know. Yeah. They got a, a hold of him, and he ended up reaching, and we had a good convo. And like I told him, the best thing to do is tie that dog. Because it's two things. You're either going to get yourself in trouble, because it's going to mm -hmm. finally bite someone. You're going to have a bill to pay. You're going to have a problem with the people. Or they kill your dog. What breed that was? A Belgium Shepherd. Okay. Or they kill your dog. So, in that case, for the dog's safety, he needs to tie it. And it's quite interesting because I saw that dog, and uh, I said to my wife, that dog looks a lot like one dog that I have, which okay. is a Belgian Shepherd. Yeah. And it's a sweet dog. And I was surprised how that dog was reacting there <laughs> that day. Yeah. But you see, again, like I explained to yeah. Koto, the dog was trapped. So no matter how bad it is, but at that given moment, it's gonna even be more crazier. Yeah, no, because it's in right. it's in pain. Yeah. So even though you're coming to help it, in its mind, you're coming to hurt it. So you approach very slowly and try to build calm. Yeah. I came prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came prepared. I had my bite suit. Uh -huh. I don't take no risk. Okay. I'm in this business too long yeah. to play around and play Superman. <laughs> I came, I came with my bite suit. Mm ready to get the job done. I, I didn't see the problem you took. Uh, took no, we the, didn't. We didn't. It was a boy or girl? No, the, a female. She's a fe yeah, female. But so it was, was it very difficult? No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. As long as you have the protection suit, you have the yeah. jacket, the pants, everything. So. And what about the leg that was okay. hooked up? It was it okay? That, that was okay. Everything yeah. was okay. Oh, well, that is great. She was running up and down in the yard yeah. and going on bad and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, because she looks so small there on, on the video, maybe she's bigger than what I noticed. So. No, but she's not a big dog. Because oh. um, Belgium Shepherd Malinois, the real old school bloodlines, mm. is medium-sized right. dogs. Is only the new school thing, you know, and they're doing other breedings and stuff. Mixing and, them up, right? Yeah, so now they're getting taller and bigger. And, yeah. But Belgium Shepherd is a medium-sized dog. Around 55, 60 pounds. Yeah, so. yeah um, more or less in kilos. I would, I, I'm more good with the kilos than, um, you know, like 20 kilo, 80 kilo, 25 kilos, yeah. 30 kilos, right. more yeah. or less, you know, wrong there. Walks are the same, like the 55, 60 pounds. pounds. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. yeah. so yeah, exactly. So, it, so it's amazing to see how people on the island, though, mm -hmm. compared to when I was a little boy, yeah. are more um, compassionate towards dogs. That's my opinion. Of, maybe I might be wrong, but I notice 
now when I'm driving, I don't see people trying to like run over a dog. Yeah. So more people are more cautious. Avoiding. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because again, again, people are starting to learn and see mm. what a dog is all about. But they still have a lot more to learn, which me, I'm a professional in what I do, but I never stop learning about dogs. And every new dog I meet, teach me something new. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> and they teach you a lot about patience, huh? Yeah, oh yes. Oh man, it's amazing. And that's something I never had before. <laughs> <laughs> I said that because I learn a lot from my dog when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, trust you me. What about women now? Because sometimes women living alone mm -hmm. and they want to have a dog. Yeah. What's the best dog for a single woman in your opinion? Again, <laughs> again, it well, all boils well, back to lifestyle. It's not about a woman. Mm. It's about your lifestyle. You're a human being, man or woman. Yeah. Um, some people are, oh, a male dog is better for women. A female dog is better. No. Nope. <laughs> I had male dogs act the same way with me, just as a female dog yeah. act with me. You know, the only thing, though, that is true about male and females, where that is concerned, when you have a female in your yard, a female is more territorial. Especially when she make puppies already. Oh, yeah. She's more territorial. And it's the same thing where humans is concerned. Again, a mother and a father is not the same where kids is concerned. My son would run before, back in the days when he was small. He fall. He mother would be, Glenn, it's your girl. I'm like, hey, leave the boy. Leave him. He got to get up. He got to learn. Yeah. You know? A mother is no. A mother is <laughs> protective. She's... And a female in the dog world is more exactly the same way. So she's yeah. territorial in her territory. She's more territorial than a male. So then for a, a, a woman that want, lives alone, wants to have a dog, it, it all depends again on the Yeah, person. she needs to know, yeah. again, her lifestyle. Yeah. So which breed would fit her lifestyle more. And then from there, mm. she chooses that dog. Could be a male or a female. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What about size now? Size. Yeah. Again, all depends on what the person like. If they want yeah. something big, big, big. If they want something medium, or they want something small. <laughs> I, know, I know years ago there was this lady had a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Wow! Yeah. And that was a big one. Impressive dogs. They were powerful. Impressive. Dog. Impressive. They call them lion dogs dog because they yeah. bring down a lot. Lion hunters. Yeah. Yeah. Impressive dogs. Yeah. Yeah, we had a chance. I train. Yeah, I, I train a couple of them in Colombia. Really? Yeah. 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 I train a couple of them in Colombia, and I had a mixed breed Rhodesian Ridgeback here. Right. In St. Martin. I have a full breed Rhodesian yeah. Ridge back. Um, lived for about uh, 11 years. Okay. Really, wow. really beautiful dog. Man. Yeah, they are. Just the presence alone, people see them in the dog. Yeah, because they got size. <laughs> yeah. They got size. And although they're very big, they're still so so gentle in a way. When you deal with them as an owner. Yeah, as, yeah. I was just about to say so, as an owner. Yeah. Yeah, but they're great dogs. Great cool. dogs. So now... I assume that the uh, the one on your shirt, that one is uh, <laughs> that's um, the pit bull. No, that's not the pit bull. No, what one is? Everybody, everybody would see it and say so, but it's not. That's an American bully. American bully. Yeah. American bully. Yeah. yeah. And what's the difference there? A pit bull, American pit bull terrier. That's from way back when. That's a very small dog. Exactly, yeah. American pit bull terrier. So when people see those dogs. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, yeah, that's a pit bull. Nah, 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 nah. He got a big head and he, nah, nah, and he big like this. And I would tell him, no, pit bulls is not like that. Yes, I tell him, no, no, no. I'm like, okay. Okay. Mm. You know, you know yeah. better than me, okay. <laughs> this is American pit bull terrier. The same thing where um, I wasn't here on the island. I was away dog training someplace. Can't remember where at the moment. But we had a serious um, incident here. Sometime back, can't remember exactly when, with some dog, I um, think he killed the baby or something oh, like yeah. that. In, I remember it that. was like Wanna Bay, Wanna Bay, I used to pawn some place. Yeah. And um, the same thing, first thing I was hear hearing, a pit bull, a pit bull, a pit bull, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And then it boils down to afterwards where I heard that it was an American um, bulldog. From what I heard, it was an American bulldog after. But those dogs, when people say everyone is a pit bull, a pit bull, a pit bull, everyone, anything is a pit mm. bull, a pit bull. And again, to the pit bull, pit bull has such a bad name. The breed has such a bad name around the world. They're not bad dogs. Tell me, I have Everyone one. is scared. They're not bad dogs. I have one. They're very nice. Yeah, pit bulls all my life. Yeah. Very friendly. Those dogs, else. pit bulls, 
the real, real American Pit Bull Terrier, if you don't train that dog to guard your place, anybody could walk in your place, teeth everything there, and still take your dog and go with it. And people don't understand that. Those dogs are the sweetest things to human beings, even strangers. What they normally don't like is other animals. They would kill a bull for you. Yeah. But human beings, they love humans. And that's where people get... Uh, that's where they get it twisted, they yeah. get free, they give it a bad name. And then another thing as well, people do a lot of mixing with those dogs. Oh, that's not good. And then, it's not that it's not good. It's not that it's not good. It's who is doing the mixing and why are you doing the mixing. Leave that to the pros. Now, if a professional that is doing search and rescue has a male American pit bull terrier and he trains that dog and that dog is 100% perfect in doing his job as a search and rescue dog saving lives and that person has a border collie female mm -hmm. perfect in her work they would breed those dogs together to get those puppies with the same blood for the instincts of that job okay okay they don't care how the pups look. They're breeding with a purpose. No, you have the people that is not professionals in what they do. They just have the dogs and they just do a mixture for just doing a mixture because I think that would look good with this one. So that's where the problem is. And that's where the problem is. Because they, it's uh, more unpredictable, some of uh, that. Because, hey, you have that part, you have that part, and this and that. Then sometimes this dog, they think is a full breed, but it's already mixed with something, but they don't know. And you understand? Mm. That's where the issues are. So that's, again, where the governments in St. Martin needs to get serious and start putting on rules and regulations Start giving out fines. Leave people respect the dogs. Leave res people respect people. And let them respect St. Martin. Okay? That way we will have less homeless dog and praying one day that we have none on the road. Explain that for the listeners and viewers when you say the government should give fines so they can understand exactly yeah. what, what you meant there. Talking about giving out fines, meaning making people respect having a dog. Okay? Respect having a dog, meaning you don't just take a dog for taking a dog's sake. And especially with certain breeds, mm. they need to be issued, just like in the French system, for instance, like to have a pit bull, a Rottweiler, um, the Rhodesian Ridgebacks, yeah. those type of dogs, American Bulldogs and stuff like that, those dogs are categorized in a certain category. Okay? and your category one, category two. Any dogs mm. that is in category one and category two, you need a permit to own that dog. So you have to, it's not long, you take a, cl a class, it's a day class. So eight hours, seven hours, eight hours approximately. Mm. You sit down in a classroom, you get your lunch break of course and everything. Yeah. And they teach you about the dogs that is categorized. So you know, at the end of that day, mm. the teacher, is gonna give you a paper, stamp, sign, then you go to the government and they issue you the permit, which you went to class and study about it so you know every single thing. So that's how it is in the French That's how it is, yeah. not only the French, the French, any French territory. So France, Guadeloupe, Martinique, mm -hmm. France and Martin, that's how it be, that's how it is, okay? And they issue you the permit and everything so you know, like for instance, um, a pit bull, you need to have the insurance, you need this, you need that. It has certain things that, you know, you mm -hmm. need to think. If, if you've done certain things in your life and whatever, you cannot own certain breeds for such a, that's in the French you law. You have criminal, criminal background. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's in the French law. Now we're not gonna go that far mm -hmm. for the Dutch, but at least, at least, people needs to learn and study about dogs and get that permit for certain breeds at least, to know that, hey, we learn about the breed, we know what is what, this and that. The another thing with fines, you need to put people to work, send them to the beaches. You see people, got people on the beach, 
and this person have a dog loose running all over the beach, issue the person a fine. What is your dog doing loose on the beach when there's people there? Give that person a fine. You're going to see things like that is going to start straightening up yeah. people in St. Martin because why? You're going to give them the responsibility that they normally had to have from the beginning, from the get-go. And some will understand and say that, hey, we cannot deal with that. That's too much. I don't want no dog. It takes a lot of <coughs> your time when you have a dog. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay? And some people don't understand that. Yeah. And they take it, and then when they see it, it's two things. Keep it tight. Mm -hmm. That's its business. Or they take it, and they dump it. You know, a, a lot of people in the neighborhood where I live have dogs. In fact, when, when I first moved to Bel Air, mm -hmm. like 36 years ago, a long time ago, we were only a few houses there. Yeah. And um, a yard was fenced up, making sure that dogs stay in the yard. Now there's a lot of people in, in the in neighborhood. And a lot of them just come rent a house, stay for six months a year and leave. Others are there for a while. Yeah. But they're walking the dog. And what is strange mm -hmm. though, some of them, most of them, yeah. they walk the dog, but they don't pick up the poop after the dog. That's another thing again. You know? That's another thing again. Especially if your dog is pooping on the concrete, on the, right. on the pavement, you know what I mean? Yeah. People is walking there, sidewalk. Pick it up, walk with a sack. They're selling those little poop sacks. Right. Or you get plastic sack from the supermarket, whatever. But pick it up. If your dog poop in the grass or whatever, okay, it's fertilizer for the grass. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. But your dog poop on the sidewalk yeah. and road, pick that up. And what surprised me, most of them come from Europe where they know where they're supposed to pick exactly. up. Exactly. They get to St. Martin and now everything changes now. You know why? <laughs> St. Martin is a land that has no laws mm -hmm. for them. So they come from United States, they come from France, they come from Holland, wherever, mm -hmm. that they know, like you said. But when they come here, it's like, eh, they're not going to do us anything here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. And that's what's happening. And then we, the St. Martiners as well, yeah. is doing the same thing. <laughs> because we never had the laws here stopping us from... So we, we live like that. You understand? Yeah. So it needs to change. What, what about um, people having dogs and sometimes the, the neighbors will complain because the dog is barking too much. Is there a special training that you can do to, to reduce that? It's not, I'm not gonna say it's a special training. You mm. have tools for that. Okay. But again, a dog will remain a dog. Why stop a dog from barking? If the dog is barking, the dog is barking for a reason. A dog is not going to stay there and back for no reason. But I'm laughing. For instance, if you have a dog tie on a chain 24-7, he's backing. I guess he's backing because he's telling you, yo, take me off the chain. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> he, a dog might be backing because he's hungry. Mm -hmm. A dog might be backing because the sun too hot, he's thirsty. A dog might, like, you know? Yeah. A dog might be backing because he see a cat. Or he see another dog. Or he see somebody in a corner that you're not seeing. Another thing, again, that people don't believe, mm. dogs see spirits. You don't see a dog barking, you don't see nothing, you're going to want no wagon, you know? oh, but shut your mouth. The dog is seeing a spirit. You see what you can't see, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, dogs do not just bark just so. They have a reason. That's their way of speaking. Yeah. Your belly hurting you, you could say my belly hurting me. The dog, you don't understand the dog telling you he belly hurting him. I laugh because there was, there was a, a time in the chat where I live where there was this European guy came, he was always complaining. Yeah. Oh, the dogs are barking, they're barking. And uh, I said to someone, they're barking because someone in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They don't bark for nothing. Exactly. The, but he couldn't realize that because he didn't have any dogs. No, but it's not, it's not that, you see, you said where he come, came from? Over there, I was just France so about a year. Mm. Not too long came back. France is another place again that those people complain for anything, okay? <laughs> and I visit one of my brothers, mm. got a couple of brothers live up there. Yeah. I visit one of my brothers while, while I was up there. And um, he has, this brother has his own place, his own house. Mm. And a neighbor that is renting is complaining about his dog, because his dog is back in. They call the gendarmes. The gendarmes came and tell him, yeah. hey, 
he needs to make the dog stop barking because if, them yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if they get too much complaint, uh -huh. they would have to take the dog away and this and that. He tell the gendarme, let me tell you something. When you step in there, you're on my property. My dog is on its, its property. This is private property. This is my house. I bought it. The person that is complaining about my dog came and meet me here and they are renting. So tell them, I am not the one to leave here because this is my place. I will leave here when I die. Wow, I love that. Okay? They could leave any day. So if you don't like it where you are, change. My dog is barking in its place and it's barking for a reason. Simple as that. The gendarme couldn't tell him nothing anymore. But now if you're renting, they're going to put extra pressure on you. Mm -hmm. They're going to issue you a fine. Then they're going to really come back. If they, and then how do people know that? They're going to complain more. And then you get your dog take away. You get your dog put to sleep if they don't find someone to adapt your dog. It's sad. Yeah, yeah it's, it's still strange because um, now where I live, um, many people didn't have dogs. Now 95% of the dogs people have dogs. Have dogs, even though they're renting. You know why? Yeah. <laughs> the place, yeah. the way how everything gets. When I was younger, I remember telling some people, we need dogs, insecurity, and this and that. Those days, Sheriff had only four dogs, just four. Yeah. I remember, I was 18 years old, just four. And I was preaching that. And they were like, nah, and this and that, whatever, whatever. Couple of years later down the road, everywhere you see canines. Everywhere you see canines. It's like good or bad? <laughs> it's good and it's bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot of things that's going on that is yeah. bad. Why you're gonna see the canines and why the canines are needed. Because there's too much things going on. Yeah. No one respects a security. What, what can a security do? The, you're paying for security, you're putting someone there, but what can he do? Explain me what can he do? He has no mace, he has no baton, he has no shekel, he can't shekel nobody if he get to hold them. He cannot protect himself. What do you want this gentleman or this lady to do? Explain me. The only thing that person could do, if they're trained and know about the workers, mm. especially on the dot side, they're not yeah. trained, is look, it's like you're, you're like a camera, okay? Mm -hmm. So you look, you see what you could you, you could pick up about the person, if the person yeah. have tattoos, if the, per, the the height, if they're short, if they're tall, the color, if you could see the color of the skin. Maybe that's observe. You know, right. yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But otherwise than that, that gentleman, that lady can't do anything. Right. But now, when you're somewhere with a trained canine, the person that thought that they would have come and thief there, when they come in and they see that canine is there, 95% of the time, or even more than 95%, mm -hmm. they will hit a U-turn and say, nah, we're going somewhere else. That's true. Okay? Because yeah. you could have a gun, but I could explain you something. Mm -hmm. I could explain, and I'm talking to you about knowledge, life, real life scenario that happened to me before in Guadeloupe while working. If you have a good trained canine, yeah. And that man come with a gun, and he missed that shot. The dog won't miss him. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> okay, that dog won't miss him. So they know. So they that's why they don't really go where they see canines. Yeah. Okay, they would go where no canines is at. I know this too. If if you drive if you're driving, people see a Belgian Shepherd in your car, they tend to pull back. Pull back. They don't want to have any contact with you. No, 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 no. <laughs> They call them the police dogs. They're <laughs> sitting <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, if people want to get in touch with you, right? Uh, you have some numbers that you want to share with us? Yes. Yeah. They could call me at um, 185, which is 0690, French number, 0690-185-763. And the Dutch number is 527-0587. 527-0587. Seven six three. And your uh, company name again is Canine Charles of Justice. Oh, oh it's it's great. I I'm so happy that I got in touch with you. Um, I gotta thank um, Cotter Wilson. Yeah, for sure. Like, oh, that was that was just great. I think we we need to do more like this.
get people involved and understand how to deal with the dog and get people like you yeah. who can help them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Okay, we need it. We need it here in St. Martin. And you have a lot of dog lovers here. You have a lot, a lot of dog lovers here. But you have some dog lovers that is doing the right thing, saving dogs, doing mm -hmm. stuff. But they themselves need training with certain things and need to understand certain things because love don't bring respect. And it's not just the dog need training, they need training too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's and you're working both of that with the Yeah, tra but that's why I tell people, yeah. I don't train the dog only. You both get trained. Yeah. When I evaluate a dog, I evaluate you and the dog, you know, not your, just the dog. You know your dog evaluates you sometimes too, I look at you and studying you. <laughs> exactly. And that's why, uh -huh. that's why I always tell people, the bond is important. Yeah. You need to have a bond with your dog. Speaking about that bond, if you have a dog, when you step out the yard, get in your car, and you notice it's like a different dog than when it's in the yard, is that normal? Yes, yeah, normal. The dog's not home anymore. He's not on his territory. Mm. So it's a different, it's, it's just like you, same thing too. You home, you're, you're king of your place. You step out out there, you're home. You have a different mindset. Mm. You look out for different things. You act different. Okay, yeah. And that, that is what I, I, I want to hear from you because that's the other thing too. Yeah. How they react mm -hmm. as quick as they leave, the, the property with, yeah. with the owners completely it's different. It's completely yeah, yeah, completely. But again, all dogs are not the same, yeah. just like humans. Some people leave their house and come out on the road believing they're still home. <laughs> <laughs> just like certain dogs. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. God, dog is man's best friend. They are. <laughs> you know? They are. And uh, I, I can't imagine a world without dogs. You know? Me either. And you know, when I... When I drive around the island now, sometimes when I see a dog, I stop. Yeah. You want to cross the road, and the dog would look at me, mm -hmm. and then decide, okay, I'm gonna cross. Cross, yeah. And when he gets to the other side, looks back at me. Like in a way, like saying thanks. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. man. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. You know, yeah, so, it is. Trust you, me, it is. And you know, another thing I notice is when I drive around, I don't see any dogs anymore, like many years ago, mm -hmm. that were run over by a car because they're so intelligent. Yes, like yeah. I mentioned to you earlier in the program, they're, yeah. they're very yeah. smart. Yeah, because what is happening, a lot of the dogs that you're seeing, mm. right? Remember, um, and I'm talking about mostly like the island dogs, okay? Those dogs, most of the right now, mm. they were born on the road. They're smart. They were born on the road because yeah. that's from what people threw on the road from before years ago yeah and they keep breeding so those dogs were born on the road so they were raised on the road the streets so they, yes exactly so they ride there by the cars by the this and that so they know they they they, they grew up there mm. so they know everything it's not like a dog that someone is gonna have home then they take the dog get big and then they never brought that dog outside and now they're gonna take that dog and dump it that dog is easily gonna get run over. Yeah. Easily, okay, it knows nothing about the streets. You know, another thing is um, giving a dog as a gift to a person. Mm -hmm. This is my belief. I, 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 I think if you have a very, very small yard, mm -hmm. you don't have the time to spend with your dog, you shouldn't get a dog from me as a gift. Yeah, as that's long, how, as that's long, how I look at it. As long, even though you have a huge yard, you can have the whole of St. Martin as a yard. If you do not have time, do not get a dog. The time is key. Even everything. though you have the whole of St. Martin as your yard, and the dog is going to be loose on the whole of St. Martin mm -hmm. as your private property, you don't have the time to take that dog out to bond with that dog. Do not get a dog. But they, they want that. You, listen to me good. Yeah. Take a dog. Have the biggest yard you want. Put the dog there. Free. In the yard. Mm -hmm. The yard is fenced. Dog can't leave. Watch the dog reaction. Don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do not deal with that dog. Just feed it. Give it water. Leave it. Watch your dog reaction in that place. He has a big yard. Take that dog. Take a leash. Put it on the leash. Open that gate. Step outside. Watch that dog reaction and tell me which one of the two the dog is happiest. Is it in the yard free or on that leash outside with you? Which one do you think? 
Which one you think that dog would be more happy? Free in the yard or with you outside of that yard on the leash? I assume he's going to be more happy with you. Yeah. Thank you. A dog mm. needs that contact, that human contact. That's why, again, man, mm. best friend, the dog needs your contact. You need to bond with the dog. When you're not there, that dog is not happy. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's amazing because um, every morning I get up, they're waiting. Yep. Right there waiting. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do anything else before they see me. Exactly. It's just amazing how uh, they are. You know? mm -hmm. And But again, to uh, all my life I had dogs. So yeah. Some people, I, I know a guy that recently got in a relationship and the person had, the lady had dogs and he was complaining, say, boy, you know, boy, I gotta be taking care of dogs. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. You gotta, but you gotta love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just not once a day; it's like two times a day, mm -hmm. every day. Yep, it's a, it's a work. Yeah, it's a work. It's a, it's a lot. So, what surprised you most um, in your profession as a dog trainer? What surprised me most in or what, what do you way? think people should know that they don't know about dogs? It all depends on the person. Again, hmm. some people know more than others. Some people go on YouTube and learn yeah. learn a lot, which YouTube teaches you stuff, mm -hmm. which is very good. Certain things are not good, but a lot is good that you could get at least a notion of what you're getting yourself into, to have an understanding at least, you know? Some people don't. So it all depends on that person, again. Okay. And if a person wanna get a dog, what should they look for? I mean, you go to select a dog, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We went to select a dog one time, and um, I looked at them, and I'm there saying to myself, sorry, I don't want none of those dogs. They don't look good. Yeah. But my daughter decided, I'm gonna pick one. I said to myself, my God, why should you pick that dog? Mm -hmm. It looks horrible. <laughs> the dog looks like it's sick. Yeah. It didn't get any food. The others look better. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, that dog turned out to be an the amazing The best thing dog. ever. Yeah. See? The best thing you said. It, the the best. best thing ever. Yeah. One day you and me, I will let you be that. I have to. Amazing <laughs> dog. You know, so, and, and that's the one that most of the time will go anywhere with me and my wife and everything. Yeah. And to show you sometimes, you can look at something, it looks so horrible at the time, mm -hmm. but then it turns out to be the best the thing. The best ever. thing ever. Exactly. Now, picking a dog, it all depends again. Some people, when they go to pick a dog, mm. they look for the biggest dog. <laughs> the fattest, biggest one. Uh -huh. Some people look for the one that is more bullying the others, you know. Yeah. So it all, some look for the prettiest dog to their, to their image yeah. of beauty. So, um, some look for a color, specific color, you know. Yeah, what do you look for you for dog? Me, <laughs> I deal with working dogs. So I look for character mm. in what I'm looking for in that dog. So for instance, if I'm looking for a dog that is gonna do any search work, nose work, which is search and rescue, or drug detection dog, explosive detection dog, anything to do with that dog nose, then I'm gonna do certain tests with the puppies oh, okay. and see which one is more into that, you know? Yeah. With what I'm gonna test it for. And then I'm gonna say, okay, well, I choose you. Cause not all dogs can do that. Exactly. All, right? And sometimes you choose that one, but it's it's in it now, mm. but while it's growing, it's showing you that it's not really interested in it. You could get that as well, you know? So, but I would basically do certain tests yeah. for the type of dog I'm looking for. Uh, if I'm looking for a dog where I'm gonna have as a protection dog, I'm gonna do certain tests with the puppies and see which one is more into that biting and don't wanna let go that, that you know, yeah. that towel or whatever, and he's always coming at it, yeah. or, you know, like determined and, I'm gonna look for those skills. Oh, okay. You know? So, although you may have a Melanoir, they are different depending on their parents, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah. so it's all about bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you feel that they're being um, overused in, some, in terms of everyone getting one, because I, the reason I ask you that question mm -hmm. is that I was at a place and the guy says to the person, it's a Belgian Shepherd. Right, mm -hmm. and the person was. I said to the person, "Yes, it is." Yeah. But 
most people don't recognize them sometimes because yeah. look, as puppies they look a little different. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. So as some, puppies they don't yeah. a lot of if you don't know the breed and you see them as little little puppies, yeah. you would think it's like an island dog. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then because the price was at a very low range, the, the person was kind of like a little reluctant. So no, it's good. It's a, it's a real it's a real Belgian shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you see again, um, a lot of people get the dogs and then they they don't know what to do with the dogs. Mm. They're breeding them, they're doing this, but then so much people is in it and get them and doing the same thing. And then you have pups here, pups here. And then again, I'm saying it don't come from professionals. And that's why I'm saying the government needs to lay, lay it on, on top of these things because why? They need to understand something. This is my job. This is another breeder's job. Okay? And I'm talking professionally. Right. Right? Um, it's just like, for instance, I cannot just pick up myself and go and put myself on the side of the road mm. and open the back of my trunk. I could cook and open the back of my trunk and just start selling food. If I do that every day, the government will come down on me and tell me, hey, you have a permit to be here to sell food. You have this, you have that. They're going to issue me a fine. Tell me I can't be there anymore. Because right. that's people's job that is paying taxes to sell food, yeah. okay? And I'm messing with their dollar, their income, their food. So why leave unprofessionals in the dog world to whatever they feel like with dogs, which is living beings, okay? It's not a supermarket, grocery things. It's not a restaurant with food. It's a living being, but you leave humans do whatever they feel like with them and then look at the outcome. They're being dumped all over the place. So, uh, you as a dog trainer, right? Mm -hmm. You can also be a dog handler. But a yeah. dog handler can always be a dog trainer, right? No. A dog handler is a dog handler. <laughs> so, you have dog handler yeah. like me. Right. Like I said, you know, I start as a young boy. Mm -hmm. I train dog, boom, boom, boom. But I was a young boy. So... That's a gift from God that was there. But I kicked off professionally as a handler in security. And you have all your certificates. I've seen it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Ah. So that's where I kicked off as. Mm. And then got a little older, work, make money, mm. travel to Guadeloupe, and pass my first certification. You know? Yeah. And a story we could go on and oh, on. No. But before I got my first certification, in dog handling. Mm. Went to Guadeloupe, the first school, the dude, he messed me up. So my money went down the drain and everything. I'd never give up. I came back to St. Martin, worked hard again, and saved money, you. contact another school in Guadeloupe, and that was the right one. I can, I can see your passion for what you do. Yeah. That's important. I love what I do and I do yeah. what I love. Yeah. And that's very important. And that's why I say there, there are dog handlers who want to be trainers. That could be a problem sometimes, but a trainer, no, no, a it, trainer it, better, it's better than a dog handler. It's not, it's not that it could be a problem. It's that a dog handler needs to understand he's a dog handler and not a dog trainer. Mm -hmm. But a dog handler that wants to be a trainer, that's not a problem. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not. But not if you're a dog handler you know? and you're masquerading as a dog trainer. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to be able to pick them wisely in a way yeah. what doing, right yeah exactly so again before i close i'm going to ask you one more time please to share your numbers with my audience in, in case they want to reach you and i know sometimes they'll call me too yeah but I'll still and like then you could also it. forward right. it so yeah. no problem the dutch number is 527-0587 527-0587 the french number is 0690-185-763 0690-185-763. I have WhatsApp on that French number. And just for my audience to know, this was there was no promotional fee paid by Mr. Williams. We None at all. We invited him here because I think I love dogs. And after seeing him, I said, I got to get this gym. And so I really, really appreciate the visit. Right. Really, really appreciate it. Good having you, man. All yeah. the best. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that's it for now. And speaking of everything, see you next time on Facebook, YouTube, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. Take care. Bye.